Wow, look at this photo. This is the after, this is the before. After, before. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In about one hour, I'm gonna show you how to use Lightroom Classic. This is more beginner tutorial. I'm gonna show you from inserting an SD card to importing everything, how to import, how to retouch, and how to export. You will know most of Lightroom Classic in one hour. That's the challenge of this video. My name is Serge Ramini. I try to teach everything super fun and super easy. If you stay until the end, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do portrait retouching and really epic landscape retouching. So make sure you watch till the end. Let's get started. Also, I made a really cool summary for you so you can see all the topics that I'm going to be talking about and you can just jump to one of the sections either by clicking at the bottom of this video or going into the description and you can go directly to the section that you are interested by. All right, so I've just inserted the cart in the computer. I'm using a Mac and you see automatically it triggers that this card called Sony A7R4. So on the left side, you have basically all the different cards. And by default, because I just inserted this card, we have this card here, the Sony A7R4. And then you have all the photos here, basically of the card. And then here you are, where you're gonna put a photo. So you have different choice. You can copy as a DNG, which actually is a good idea because that's gonna make the photo about five, 10, 20% smaller. And also DNG is supposed to be a format that's gonna be more compatible like maybe in 10 years, 15 years from now. So it's a good idea to just use copy as DNG. I wanna copy what's in my cart on my hard drive. So I don't wanna add, add would be if I would add the photo and keep it at the same place. I wanna move them, okay? So I can just copy. They would still be an ARW if I use copy, which is the Sony RAW file or copy as DNG. Takes a bit more time but it's going to take less space on my hard drive. So I advise you to do that. And so here, I'm just going to make it simple. File remaining. I don't want to handing file handling. I'm not doing nothing to do with it. But a destination is very important. I'm going to go to pictures. And you see, I already got like lots of folders there because that's how I organize some of my photos. But for this tutorial, I'm going to pretend I'm going to create a new folder called photos. Okay, let's just call it photos. And this is really what I advise you to do is uh, photos. And this is like travel. You know, I do a lot of travel photography, interior design photography, portrait. So I like to have a folder called photos, which is the main folder. And then one by subject. So this one I'm going to call travel. And here is the cool trick that I love to do is to do two things. Uh, I'm going to click choose and I'm going to take the uh, organize into by date. By date, what's gonna happen is that, you see, in travel, it's gonna create a folder called 2022, and for every day I took a photo, it's gonna do that, which is really cool. Also, I like to put in a keyword, this is an Iceland photo shoot, so I'm just gonna put as a keyword Iceland, but if I type Iceland, I will be able to find them right away. And that's basically all I do. So I select my card, by default, all the photos are selected, I'm gonna input everything that's on this card in. I'm gonna put the keyword Iceland and I'm just putting it into pictures and travel. And the reason why I use photos is, let's say I wanna you know, move all my photos somewhere else, I can just grab my photo folder and it's got all the subfolders under. It's a good way to organize. I can have this you know, backed up with a software in Dropbox, whatever. It's good to have everything located in one place. And I really advise you, I didn't do this for years to organize by date, but I think organizing by date is really clever. So, um, basically that's what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna import the photo. So the first thing that I do as the photo is importing, and this is the way I do it. If you have any other way, you can leave a comment and let me know. But what I like to do is I like to click here to see the photo in full screen. And I like to go through my photos and if I see a photo has some kind of potential, I give it a one star, just a one star. So. Here we go. So the photo is a little dark right now. It's kind of hard to tell. You know, I have a tendency to underexpose my photo, but this one I underexpose a little too much. Um, I just want to make sure the photo is sharp. So I'm just going to make it brighter. And you see it's not sharp because I was shooting. Um, the wave was coming at me in Iceland. So this one I'm not going to take. And I'm going to go through all the photos. And um, basically when you click on the... On the um, you know, with a mouse, you can make it basically, uh, you can zoom in 
and you see I've got a lot of blurry photos. So what I go through and I go through and I, I look for a photo. You see this one is perfectly sharp. So this one I'm when I find a photo that has potential, I give it a one star. So I just press one, and you see it says set rating to one. And I go through as I import the photo, I always do that. So one thing you can do to go faster because you see all these photos. Well, we only have three, so it's going to be fast. But I just boost the exposure a little bit. I zoom in. If yeah, I think this photo has potential. I'm going to give it a one star. And I do that for every photo. It takes a while. Uh, this one seems to be a bit more blurry. Yeah, it's not super sharp. So I only take super sharp photo and I don't care about the rest. This one is also a little bit blurry. I can tell. I mean, look at the difference between this photo and this photo. You see, this one is super crisp and this one is not super crisp. And if you if you have a doubt, you can select both photo and press C. C for compare. And you can compare next to each other. Like, you see how... Um, let's see here. This one is super crisp and this one is not super crisp. So let's go back to this mode. Uh, you can press E to go back to this mode. I'm also going to give you this. It's, this is the best shortcut you should know in Lightroom. It, I made it plastified. The link is under. You can get it for free. Just pay shipping and handling. It's really cool. Uh, so yeah, I'm not going to take this one. Let's see this one. This one might be sharp. So I just go to the develop module and I boost the exposure really quick. And I want to make sure this one is sharp. This one is actually pretty sharp. I kind of like this one, but I don't like... Yeah, the photo is kind of nice. Okay, let's see. This one is nice. Ooh, super sharp. So I give it one. And basically, I do that. I go through all my photo. I click just to make sure it's sharp. Like this one is really nice. If I find a photo as potential, I just give it a one. Uh, let's say this one. Ooh, this one has a lot of potential and it's sharp. I give it a one also. And then... Uh, so... I'm going to do that for all the photos. I'm not going to bore you with it. I'm just zooming in, making sure it's sharp and giving it a one. So now I have a lot of HDR. What I usually do to see if which one I like the most is I, I look at the overexposed photo and I give it a one. I don't really like this one. That's another HDR, no more exposure, overexposure, underexposure. I think I don't like so much this one. I don't like the foreground there. I think I have better done. I just look at the overexposed photo. This one is kind of a bit better, but I want to show you something that's in panoramic. Let's see this one. Yeah, this one is good. So normal, underexposure, overexposure. Let's see here. And if you press I, you can see the speed. So this one is 150th of a second. This one is 150th of a second. And this one is, oh, you know what? I didn't do HDR. I just did two exposure. I did one exposure for one exposure for the sun and one for the canyon. Let's see if this one is sharp. Yeah, this one is sharp. So you know what? I'm just going to give a one to this one and a one to this one. All right. Yeah, it's not, I didn't really do an HDR or sometimes, did I do an HDR? No, I think I just did two exposure. One, I did it manually. Like, yeah, I don't want, to, I want to show you like a portrait photo. This one might be cool. Yeah. You know what? This one I already gave a one star. So anyway, let me go through and give a one star to anything which I think has potential. Okay, so here is some portrait of uh, Albert Droz, an amazing photographer that I shot well, like this one. I'm going to give it a one star. I just go through the photo that I did with him. I, you know, I, I give it a one star to this one. One star to this one. Okay, good. Okay, so now I've gone through all my photos and you can see here I have this SD card at 114 photos. So I went through and I looked at all the photos that I kind of liked, right? And so now I'm going to click here. You see, I'm going to go to filter and I'm going to go to rated, okay? And when you go to rated by default, I think you get one star or you might not get a star. You just click here on one star. And what that's going to do is going to select only the one star. And that was the whole purpose of this. So now check this out. Out of 114 photos, I have 25 photos uh, to look from. And I know all my photos are sharp and I know I kind of like them. So now I'm going to do, because I still have a lot of photo, I'm going to go and I, I show you a little trick. I'm going to now vote for two stars. So what I'm going to do is I, I'm looking for photos which are very similar. So you see the first four are very similar. I'm going to press shift select to see the first four. And I'm going to press N on my keyboard. Shift and shift tab to go full screen. So N 
and shift tab. Don't worry, I'm giving you all the shortcuts. Uh, the link is under the video if you don't remember all of that. So I've got four photos and now I'm playing the Highlander game. There can be only one. Uh, when I take four photos, I really like which one I like the most. So what I'm looking for is like for cool leading lines. This one is a bit messy. I like this one. This one has better leading lines. I know this one is sharp. There's some drops there, but maybe we can correct that in Photoshop. So I think I'm going to give a two star to this one. And they're too good. Uh, no, this one's got too much water, too much water. So, okay, out of the four, I'm only picking up one star. So shift tab to go out of the full screen mode. And I'm still in survey mode. Remember, you press N to go in survey mode. Don't ask me why N is survey mode. It's kind of crazy. And then I'm going to select the next full one. Shift tab to go back in full screen mode. Remember, you got the shortcuts waiting for you. And uh, boom, 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 boom. Ooh, I love this one. I'm giving you a two star to this one. So I'm just selecting and pressing two. And then uh, maybe this one, I'm going to give it two star for this one. You, you can give it two star, you know, as much as you want. And okay, and I, I usually go four by four. It goes really fast. So I click on the first one, shift select. And uh, okay, which one am I going to give a two star to on this one? Uh, I kind of like the wave here. It goes woo, 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 woo. But this one is like over, yeah. I'm not sure. I might just give a two star to this one and shift tab. Okay. And then let's take the next full one. Shift tab again. Shift tab. You can go full screen to no full screen. So that's, that's full screen. On this one, I think I'm going to go for this one. It's got a little star dust here. Okay, two star here and two star here. I really like this too. I'm not going to retouch everything. This one is by itself. I'm definitely giving it a two star. And then we've got this one, the HDR one. One, two, three. Yeah, one, two, three. Yeah, this... I'm going to select all three, right click, and I'm going to go to Sage Rating and two. Because when you select different photos, and you, if I press two, if I had pressed two, it would only give the two star on the one selected. If I want the two star on all three, I do that. This one is kind of cool, but I, I keep giving a two star. And let's, let's see here is this one. I'm going to select all three, press N to go back in survey mode, Shift Tab to go in full screen mode, which one I want to retouch. I think uh, I want to retouch this one, so I'm going to give it two star. Okay, perfect. So now I have another selection. So remember, we had 114 photos. Now I got 25 photos. I'm going to press two star. And now I only, I'm going to press here again. I'm going to go back to the beginning. And now I only have 11 photos to retouch. I'm not going to retouch 11 photos, but I want to teach you retouching by using some of these photos. I think the one I'm going to be using is this one. I'm going to retouch this one. Okay, so I'm ready to retouch this one. Out of the two star, this is the one. You see, I only have 11 photo to retouch. I'm going to go to the develop module and let's retouch it. So when you press I on your keyboard, you can see exactly how this was shot. This was shot at 0.8 second f14 ISO 50. Uh, so pretty clean shot. It's, uh, oh, no, you see this one is not fully sharp. I made a mistake, so that's fine. Let's see if this one is super sharp. Yeah, this one is super sharp. This one is super sharp. Uh, let's retouch this one. It could be fine. So uh, let's see here. Actually, you know what? I want to go back to my one star to see if this one is sharp. Yeah, this one is sharp. I think I want to retouch this one. Okay, just because I, I like it. Uh, I might retouch. Uh, I'm, I'll show you how I can retouch this one and this one really fast. But I'm going to start by this one. So the way I usually do once I'm in the develop manual is I open the shadows. Okay, I always open the shadows first and then I bring down the highlights. Okay. That's just to give a more, have more data in the shadows and more data in the highlights. But then the photo really wa looks washed out. So then what I do is I hold on the Option key and I bring it down. By holding the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on Windows, I can bring down the blacks. Okay. And um, what you see here in blue is our pixel, which are 100% black. I like to have 100% blacks uh, when it comes to uh, pixels. And then if I do the same thing, I hold on the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on Windows, and I go right. In that case, I'm holding, what you see here is pure burnout color. I don't want that. So I usually eyeball it. I want to make it a bit bright like that. I think my screen is a bit dark. I'm just going to make my screen a bit brighter. Uh, yeah, it's a bit dark. So I'm just going to 
Usually I like to have my screen about, you see, one, two, three, one, two, three, three dots. Uh, that's just how I like to have it. I think I messed it around with it. Okay, now it's very bright, it's very good. And now I'm just gonna add a bit of contrast. So now check this out. If we press the backslash, you can see the before and after. That is the first step of the natural drama formula. I wrote a book about this called the natural drama formula. Same thing, you can get the book for free. You just pay shipping, the link is under the video. It's part of a membership program that I'm doing, but you can just get the book if you want. Link is under the video. And that way you have a reference like my base book on Lightroom. So, okay, cool. So first step of the natural drama formula is uh, exposure. Then what I'm gonna do, I like to, uh, right away, I like to get rid of the dust here. Now, there's a new feature that just came out in uh, Lightroom Classic, which is that they have brought this, by default, you've got Content Hour Fill. Uh, it's really cool. Content Hour Fill, you just click and basically what it does, it looks at the pixel around and cleans it up. I'm just gonna clean up here all the dust that I can see, and I can see quite a bit because I was changing lens all the time on the beach, and in Iceland, the sand is so thin, it just keeps on coming to your lens. And so if you wanna make sure I didn't miss any spot, you can click on visual spot. I think I got most of it. Okay, it's perfect. All right, step number two of the natural drama formula is the white balance. So we did the exposure. Let me show you again before and after. Now we're going to do the white balance. So as shot is how I had it originally, which I think I really like. I can look at daylight, which is a classic. Yeah, it's basically I had it on daylight. And then I can look at cloudy. Cloudy is a little warm. I'm losing the blue in the sky. I don't, I don't like this. Shade. And I'm just going to go back to daylight. I might even add a bit of magenta and a bit of blue. Just a little bit to make the colors because it was really nice. Okay. And then I think the overall photo is actually too bright. So I'm just going to bring it down a little bit. Okay. So I did the first two steps of the natural drama formula. The exposure. And then I did the... Um, the white balance. The third step is color adjustment. So this is a pretty fast step and, and I'm really fast at it. You just go to the U saturation and luminance panel. U means basically U is gonna completely alter the colors and you have two ways to go about this. You can just play around with this slider. I can tell there's a lot of blue and magenta so it's probably here and look at what it does so photo. it actually completely changes the color, right? That's not really the way I do it. You can just play around and see what you like. Like for example, on this one, I would definitely go to the right. Or you can click here and take what we call the target tool. You can click and drag. And if you go up, it's gonna change the color. If you go down, it's gonna change the color. But if you go up just a little bit, it might just be interesting. Okay, so I might, that blue, yeah. So you can just adjust. I actually like more this way, yeah. Honestly, to be honest, on this one, I, uh, you can use the tool going up and down, see what it does, or you can just play around with the colors. Just look what colors you have, but you gotta be careful not to go too strong because it's gonna completely change the color. So I'm just making the magenta a little bit stronger. I'm gonna make the purple a bit stronger. And as part of the refinement of colors, well, let's finish. Let's go to saturation. I like to, I'm gonna maybe add a bit of saturation to the red, if there's any red and to the magenta in the photo. Um, just so saturation is to make colors more vivid. Uh, I don't wanna make the blue more vivid because it's already pretty blue, but I, I boosted a little bit here, the magenta, not too much. Maybe let's, the purple I mean, and let's boost the magenta here a little bit. Now I do wanna make the sky a bit darker. So if you go to luminance, you see a blue can be more blue or less blue, vivid or less vivid but it can be darker or brighter. So if you click on the sky here, and you go up, it's gonna make the blue very bright, or if you do the, go down, it's gonna make the blue very dark. And that's what I wanna make, I wanna make the blue a bit dark, okay? So basically, you can either, to repeat, you can just move these sliders and see what it does to your photo, or you can use a tool and move it around. And I usually do a little bit of you, a little bit of saturation, and a little bit of luminance. Luminance, I mostly do the blue, Saturation, I usually do the warm colors. That's just my formula. But that's not all. Uh, color refinement, I like to go here in Adobe Colors. And then this is what we call a profile. Now, because I'm using a Sony RAW file, there is something called camera matching and that's provided by Sony. And I can go in here and check this out. These are different 
way of interpreting the colors. And I usually use landscape. Now landscape is gonna be a little too much on this one, but I'm still gonna use it. I'm gonna use landscape because I love what it does. It makes the color pop a lot, but almost too much. So you know what? I'm still on the color refinement. You can go back and say, maybe I'm gonna cut down a little bit the magenta, just a tad, and maybe cut down a bit the blue, just warm it up. Just a tad. Maybe even lower the vibrance because the overall color is too much now with the, the preset. But now I kind of like the colors. So we did step number three, which is color refinement. Just playing around with the profile. Profile is a one trick pony. It's either on or off. There's no in between. And I like the landscape profile. Uh, every raw file you're going to have is going to, you go to camera matching, it's going to be based on what the manufacturer, so Sony in this case, provided to Adobe Lightroom. If you don't see camera matching, what you can do, you can go to Adobe Raw, you will always see that, and you can go to Adobe Landscape, you'll get a different color result. I prefer I prefer what the Sony Landscape profile. It's very vivid. I like very powerful, you know, landscape photos. Okay, so that's pretty, pretty good. I love that. And um, now step number four of the natural drama formula is dodge and burn. Now on this one, dodge and burn makes make things brighter or darker. So on this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go to linear gradient, click and drag. And when you click and drag a linear gradient, what it does is, you see there's a whole bunch of settings. Uh, right now you just see red, okay? But if I lower the exposure, what's really cool is that that value here of minus 0.61 is gonna be applied in full from the very top of the photo to the red point. And from the red point to the white point is gonna go on a gradient. So if I have a long gradient, it's gonna be a smooth gradient. If I have a very short one, it's gonna be very abrupt gradient, which is not gonna be nice. The reason why I want to darken the top of the photo is I want to focus the eyes of the person inside of the photo. They, has a, they have an anchor point with a the foreground. They have a nice leading line leading to inside of the photo. So I just want to make this a bit darker like that. And uh, maybe not so much, just a little bit darker. I want to... I want to put something in the middle here to attract the attention of the viewer. So I'm going to click on plus and I'm going to try another local adjustment, which I love, which is a radial gradient. Same thing, you click and you drag, you make sure you hold, you, you, your finger is still on the mouse. I'm going to make a big circle where I want people to look at and I'm just going to add a bit of exposure in that circle. Okay, and maybe a little bit of saturation at the same time. So I'm giving a bit of saturation and I'm making things brighter. It forces the eyes to go inside, which is really, really cool, okay? So now you've got a darker, you know, this is dark. I usually darken the bottom, but in this case, it's so dark, I don't need to do that. So now I wanna force in the leading lines and make the people look even more inside of my photo. So for this, I'm gonna use another local adjustment tool, which is the brush here. So I'm gonna take a brush, and when you use the brush, there is a new set of settings here, which is the feathering. So the feather is very important. I'm gonna show you. So if I put a feather that's very low, uh, like feather at like zero, and I start brushing, it's not gonna be natural, right? We don't want that. So if you wanna erase what you just did, you can press delete, and then you have to restart, brush. Okay, if you do a feather that's 100% and you brush, it's, and you add a bit of exposure, it's gonna be hardly noticeable, okay? Uh, and if you want to erase a little bit of the brush, but not everywhere, you can just hold on the option key and check it out. The, uh, it becomes a minus and the middle mouse is going to make the brush smaller or bigger. So because it's a minus, I can erase the brush that I just did. So I can brush if I let go alt and I can, if I press alt, it becomes an eraser. Isn't that cool? Now in this case, I advise you when you do the dodging, which means making the photo brighter, to have the exposure just around 0.5. And I just wanna make here a bit brighter where the, um, so that the leading lines is a little more obvious and it leads the eyes from, the, from this all the way there, okay? And so I kind of like that, it's maybe a bit strong. You can lower, I'm gonna lower the exposure and boost the highlights so that it's less obvious. Highlights is only gonna make the very highlights brighter. Uh, it's different from the exposure. It's going to make everything brighter. Yeah, try not to go... Yeah, maybe it's a bit too much. 
yeah, like that. So now it goes like this here, boom. I want to make this rock, I don't know, I want to make it punch a little more, even more shiny. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to take a brush, and, and this time I'm going to add a little bit of clarity and a little bit of exposure. And I want to make that ice cube more shiny. Check it out, before, after. And you can see all the, all the local adjustment that we did. So we did first the top. Here, there is a name for it. You can double click and give it a name. So let's call it uh, top or sky. It's a sky, right? And then you can go here and you can press this little eye to see the before and after. And this is, I can call this like um, uh, middle of the photo, middle bright, middle bright. Okay. And then here, this brush is for the leading line. So let's call it leading line, leading line brush. Okay. And then here we have another mask. And this one is just the ice cube. So let's call it ice cube, ice cube. And that's cool. That's a new feature that you can uh, name your uh, things. So now I did the dodging. The last step of my natural drama formula is usually to do like the sharpening of things like this. So uh, for the sharpening, I zoom in at 100%. I look at my photo. Oh, what a beautiful shot. It's really nice, very sharp. And usually if I shot this at 100 ISO, so I'm going to press I to make sure 50 ISO 50, which is even better. So what I do is I just do about 10 of noise reduction because there's always a bit of noise in the photo and I put the sharpening at 90. So 90 plus 10 makes 100. That's what I do with my photo when they are very uh, around 100 ISO. Let's say the photo would be at like 800 ISO. I would put the noise reduction like around 20 and then the, the sharpening on 80. So that noise reduction and sharpening is equals 100. Okay. But last but not least, very important, but when you click and drag it, it zooms in, is the masking tool. I'm gonna to hold down the option key and I'm gonna right go the right side. Now, check it out. The way this works is, it's like in Photoshop, black conceal, white reveals. So anything that is black is not gonna get sharpened. I don't wanna sharpen the sky. I only wanna sharpen with this detail. So I always put my, sharp, my masking above 40. So rule of thumb for the sharpening, I basically do noise reduction around 10 and sharpening around 90 if my photo is in 100 ISO. And if my photo is a bit, a bit noisy, I go to 20. I try not to go over 20 because it becomes very, very blurry and then sharpening at 80. And that's just, it's just a basic sharpening. It's not huge. It's just a basic sharpening. Okay, I really like the photo. This is the before and I've looked at the difference before and after. I'm pressing the bass slash key and Sometimes you can go too far on something. For example, my brush for me is a little too far. So because it's a local adjustment, you can just go back here, find the leading line brush. I think this one is a little too strong. It's too strong. Select it. And then you can go back here and I'm just going to bring down the highlights and maybe lower a little bit here so that it's less in your face, but it's still there. Yeah, perfect. And that's the beauty of raw development. Everything is non-destructive. All right, I'm really happy with this photo. So remember, I gave it first a one star to the one that I think that has potential, two star to the one that I think I'd even better. And now that it's retouch, I give it a three star. And if I really, really love it, uh, oh, it's not working. So it's not working because I am in the brush. So I have to go click back here to my overall setting and I think it's gonna work if I press three star. Yeah, now it's working. Three star, that's good to know. If you are in the local adjustment, the star don't work. You have to click here to go back to the overall adjustment. So I like that a lot. And I want to show you a really cool trick. Let's pretend that this photo, which is almost the same, but just different, it was not blurry because it's actually a little bit blurry. I could click here on previews and it's going to paste everything that I did on this one on this new one. So when you have two photos, which are very similar, look at this. All I had to do was one click and boom. And like, plus the brush strokes, old match and everything before after. Isn't that cool? That is so cool. So I could do the same thing here. I could take this photo. Which one has a two star? Let me uh, select the, just a two star. So this one has a two star. Uh, I could just go here and click on previews. Yeah, this time it's not working. All right. So what you, if it's not working, you go here, you press command shift C. And then you can command shift C, you have this thing. I'm going to press check all, but on the masking, I don't want to copy. Maybe the mask, no, no, I'm not going to copy that. 
just maybe the middle bright and the sky I'm going to copy. Uh, remember, because that's just the sky and that's to make things brighter. So I'm going to say copy. And then I can go back here and I can click on previous now. And it's because I just copied that, it's going to work now. Let's see. And uh, boom. Yeah, it worked. And you see, it did most of the work. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Now on this one, I would have to go to Photoshop. There's like a drop of water. There's some people there. So, uh, you know, I think this one is even too, you know, and you can adjust, you know, I can go here, I can check my black point, my white point, but you know, most of the job has been done, not crazy. And then to erase this, I can try to erase it with, the, with this tool here, but I doubt it's going to do a good job. So let's try it. So here we have a couple of my uh, students that was there. I'm just going to see if I can erase these two people. Uh, okay, wait for it, wait for it. Yeah, it's not really doing a good job. So when that does that, that's when you kind of need Photoshop. Okay, so how do you go from Lightroom to Photoshop? And here also, I'm going to right click, edit, and edit in Photoshop 2023. And that's going to launch Photoshop with this photo and all the development we've done with it. Okay, here I am in Photoshop. And if it doesn't look like the same than me, you can go to Windows. I can, you can go to Workspace and you can go either to Essential or you can go to Windows, Workspace, Photography, which is what I have. All you care about is having the Layers panel. If you don't see it, you can just go to Windows, Layers. Now, this is not a course about Photoshop. In fact, at the end of this video, I will recommend you another YouTube video where I show you most of Photoshop in about 20 minutes, really cool. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this layer here, which is this photo, and I'm gonna drag and drop it here on the plus, and uh, so you can see the before and after, and I'm gonna, by default, I have the zoom, I'm gonna zoom in, and I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna use two tools. The first tool I'm gonna use is, the, is this tool here. Uh, it's called the Spot Hitting Brush Tool, uh, which, sorry, it's, it's this one, Spot Hitting Brush Tool, that's what it looks like. The shortcut is J, and um, I'm, I'm gonna, you see, I've got a little circle. Now, any tool in Photoshop, if you hold down the Control and Alt key, and you left click, you can make it bigger or smaller. So I'm gonna make it a bit bigger, and I'm just gonna paint on my students, and on their shadows, to, so it's kind of a little bit what I did in Lightroom. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna do some of the stuff, and you can paint over several times, uh, and you, you're going to get a better result, not every time, but often. And you see, there's still something weird here. So usually what I do is uh, I finish it off with a stem tool, which is S for stem tool. You click here and same thing. So remember control and option left click can make anything bigger or smaller in Photoshop. So I'm going to make it big like this. And the way the stem tool works is very simple. You hold on the option key and the stem tool becomes a target, and you click where something would say, I want this texture to go over here. So I'm gonna click here, and then when I bring my mouse, I can see the preview of what's gonna happen. It's gonna copy what's there here. And I'm gonna align it with the water, and I'm just gonna brush one time up and down. I'm just gonna do it here. Okay, and then let go and do it again. It's very important to let go, because it just gives a better result. I can click here, Alt, and click here and click here to copy the mountain. I can click here to copy that. That to copy here. Here we have a drop. I'm gonna use the stem tool right away on the drop. Uh, so I'm just gonna copy that texture here. And because nature is so random, nobody I think is gonna notice that. So I'm just copying this texture here. And uh, then you look at it from far. Uh, yeah, you kind of guess it's here. So. One thing you can do to make it even better, you take the stem tool and you lose, once you did a bit, but you can see something is still going on. You, you take the stem tool and you put the flow of the stem tool at 50%. And you make it a bit bigger and I'm just going to click here. And that way it's only going to copy 50% of the, the texture. It's going to sort of blend the texture together. And often it gives a better result. Okay. Something like that or like that. All right, before and after. I don't think anybody's going to notice that there was anything there because it's so random. So now I'm happy I can go to File, Close, Save. And what that's going to do is going to save. You see, it's saving here and it's going to bring it back in Lightroom exactly where it is. So that's so cool because Lightroom communicates no problem with Photoshop back and forth.
Okay, perfect. It's back. So now I'm giving it a three star. And I can now do, look at my three star. I only got two photos, which is this one and this one. Beautiful photo, which I have retouched. I'm really happy with it. So now let's go to my two star again. And let's do the HDR. So one, two, three. So the HDR, what you do first is you select them. You uh, right click. You go to photo merge HDR. And what that's going to do is that it's going to create one super raw file with all this exposure. You see, and you just click on merge. And that way you're going to have all the detail in the sky around the sun and all the details in the shadow in one superb raw file. So the raw file is here. You see it now has, it's called HDR DNG. So it's here. And I can just retouch this one if it was a single raw file. But now I've got a lot more data to work with. So I'm going to open up the shadow. So on HDR file, I usually don't open up all the way and I don't bring the highlights all the way uh, because plus it looks weird here. So I'm going to keep it like that. And then I'm going to do my black point. Remember the state of the... So I want about 1% of darkness. And then white point, I'm going to keep it like that. I think this one I want to make much darker. Much darker like this. And... Um, you see the problem on this one is that it's bright outside and it's dark inside. And I kind of want the opposite. I want people to look inside of the photo. So I'm going to cheat a lot on this one. Don't tell anybody. But first, let's look at the white balance. Let's look at daylight. Uh, yeah, I was on daylight. Maybe we make it a bit, a bit more yellow, a bit more magenta, a bit warmer, maybe a bit darker. Yeah, you know, I don't really like that photo very much. But I'll show you something kind of cool. Uh, the sky is here, so sorry, the sun is here, and I'm going to pretend this is much more darker because I don't like this whole part here. So I'm going to go here, take a brush, and uh, I don't know if it's going to help, but you know, you got to try stuff in life. I didn't actually try this. I'm going to lower the exposure with the middle mouse. I'm making a big brush, and I'm just lowering. Oh, my flow intensity is very low. So, and I'm just going to make this darker. It's just, it's killing me that, you know, I want people to look inside. And then I'm going to do the opposite. Go here, add a brush, and I'm going to add some exposure. And I'm going to make things inside brighter so that people look inside. I don't really like this photo. I just wanted to show you what the HR wor workflow is. I'm not going to, I'm not even going to give it a three star because, you know, I did a basic adjustment and I don't like it. Let's do a couple of more here. I want to show you a couple more. Let's do this one. I really like this one. And let's do this one really quick. I mean, I wanted to focus mostly on, on retouching. So this one, let's do to make sure it double check. It's really sharp. So up, I go back to my adjustment here. Yeah, it's super sharp. So natural drama formula. Step number one, exposure. So open the shadow, bring on the highlights. Do the black point. Yeah. Do the white point. I go a little faster now because you know that. Okay, I'm holding the option key when you see blackness. Okay, perfect. And then a bit of contrast. Let's see the white balance, maybe daylight. It was on daylight. I think I want to make it maybe a bit warmer and a bit more magenta, just a little bit, something like this. Yes. Okay. On this one, I didn't show you yet the crop tool. I want to crop it because too much sky in the sky is not very interesting. So I'm going to go here on the crop tool. I'm going to go here 16 by 9. And you see the horizon is not straight. So I'm going to use this tool here. The angle tool, I'm going to click and drag and make it follow the horizon. It's going to make it straight. I love 16 by 9 because it's very dynamic. And you see it's very rule of third. Like you got one third of sky, two third of water. I love it. I love it. I love it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm ready to adjust the colors. So I'm going to go to U. I'm going to go really fast. U, saturation. So U, I'm going to click on the water. Go up and down. Make it Maybe go down a bit to make it a bit more greenish blue saturation oh sorry you let's go here maybe yeah maybe go down a bit to make a bit more orange okay luminance maybe i want to make my, my blue a bit darker just a tad here yeah something like this now i kind of like that and then i'm going to go here and i'm going to adobe landscape or even better camera matching landscape which is going to nah it's too crazy i'm going to take adobe Landscape is better. Adobe Landscape. Okay, now I don't like what I did here with the blue. So I'm going to go back to you. Click here. 
And I don't know. I'm just going to put that back here. I don't know what I'm doing with the U. Sometimes I like something and then I look at it 10 seconds after I don't like it. Now I kind of like the colors. So now I'm ready to do step number four of the natural drama formula, which is the white balance. So I'm going to go here, uh, the dodge and burn, I mean. So linear gradient, click and drag, click and drag, lower the exposure, add back maybe a bit of blue in the sky, just a tad. All right, something like that. That's good. And then on this one, I want to make a lot the, the flow of the water more interesting. So I'm going to go here, take a brush, take a little brush, and then a little brush, make the brush a bit that size, and then make sure flow and density is like this, so it's, the brush strokes are not too obvious. And I want to I want to put a bit more emphasis, maybe a bit more. I want to make some of this brush stroke a little more obvious here. Not brush stroke, I mean the wave. Not everywhere, but just making, uh, you know, a little bit. Like, check it out. Before, after. I'm just making this. Yeah, not. it's a bit too strong. I'm going to lower that. A little bit too strong. Okay, then I'm going to create a new brush. This one, this time I'm not naming them. And I just want to add a bit of uh, exposure and clarity. Clarity is... Uh, Clarity makes things a bit sharper. So I'm going to add a bit of clarity. Look at that. It just makes the eyes brighter, like more like a diamond. And here also. Just add a bit of, just on the eyes, a little bit of, to make it pop. And uh, voila, I think this one is kind of cool. Before, after. And you have to be very careful because your eyes adapt to the photo. So backslash key for the before and after. And then I like to look at, so I'm going to give it a three star. And then I go here three star so now I've got this one and now I look at this one I'm like it's too crazy it's too purple it's too much and I so on this one I'm just going to lower a little bit the vibrance uh, it's just a little too much and then look at this one uh, even more a little the vibrance and this one is kind of cool what a morning what a morning I mean you when you get three photos like this in one morning ooh, ooh, ooh. okay Next, let's retouch. Oh, I want to touch, retouch this really quick. This is going to be really fast. Open the shadows, bring down the highlights. This is Versterhorn, the Western Horns. One of the nicest beach. You got this weird, not this weird, but this incredible reflection here. So maybe add even a more vibrance. Yeah, maybe a bit of clarity on this one. Very simple. This one I'm going to do 16 by 9 also. I think it's going to work better. I'm going to zoom in a bit. I'm going to center it perfectly. Like that, boom. And then I think on this one, I want to... Uh, so I did the exposure, now white balance. I'm going to add maybe a bit of magenta. Make it a bit more white. Oh, I f there's a bit of spots here. When you erase a spot. Maybe I can erase that. I don't like this. Let's see if I can make this a bit cleaner. Let's see if I can make this a bit cleaner. Just so that I have a cleaner foreground. Yeah, it's not so bad. Not so bad just a little bit cleaner and then on this one I think I want to make the top a little bit darker so I'm going to go here linear gradient oh I'll, I'm going to show you something kind of cool it's a little more advanced I didn't want this to be too advanced but check this out so I'm going to start again you you go to uh, you go here create mask and you select the sky and that's going to select the sky here now I can do stuff just for the sky now but I don't like the fact that the sky, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm basically making it darker completely. So what I want to do is I'm going to I select the sky. I'm going to go here and I'm going to intersect mask with linear gradient. So I have the sky selected and now I'm making a gradient. Okay. And check this out. And I'm going to darken it. And what's happening, it's only darkening the sky. It's not influencing the mountain. If I didn't do that, if I did directly a linear gradient... Uh, hold on, without the sky selection. So uh, I, if I did a linear gradient like that, and I lowered the gradient, you see it's going to make the top, let me do it, it's going to make the top of the mountain also getting dark. I only want to make the sky dark. So what you do, I do it again, you go here, you choose the select sky, it's going to select the sky, then you go here on sky and you click on interest, intersect mask with linear gradient. And now I don't have to worry about the mountains. I can make my sky darker, maybe even more blue. And it's not going to influence the mountain. It's pretty cool, no? Pretty cool. 
Okay, on this one, I want to create one more, a little brush. I'm just going to add a little bit of exposure. I don't want to show you too much stuff, but you should be able to practice what I'm showing you. I just want to make the shininess a bit brighter here. And voila, I really like this photo. I'm not going to do any sharpening. That was just like a really quick retouch, but I'm still going to give it three star. So, oh, you have to go out of there, three star. And then um, here on the portrait, what can I do? I can go and uh, portrait, you have to go much lighter. I'm just going to open a shadow, bring down a bit the highlights, uh, you know, do a bit of black, do a bit of white. Okay. And then the good thing is, is there's some, uh, a lot of new feature here for portrait retouching. I can go here to um, person and then uh, you click on person, it's going to detect everything. So let's say I want to make his skin better. I can click to face skin. You see in red is selected his face skin. And now I can create a mask uh, on the face skin and uh, I can add some minus clarity on his face to, uh, you know, get rid of anything small, uh, maybe lower the bit of exposure, just a little tad like that. And voila, I did a bit of retouching just on the face. Now let's say I want to make his eyes pop. I can go here, create mask, and I can go to uh, select people, click on the person, and this time go to his eyes, scalarla, scalar. Oh, you pronounce that in English, I'm French, sorry. I scale out, which is the eyes basically. And I can go here and say create mask just on the eyes. And I can add a bit of exposure, not too much. She's going to look weird, but a little bit of exposure, just a tad, like 0.20 on, on, the, on the thing. I can make his lips also. I can go create a, a new mask. Uh, uh, you can go to select people, him, and I can go to his lips. And then I can create a mask. And now I can like, just for the fun, I can add more saturation. It's like if he had lipstick, uh, we don't want that. Uh, but maybe, you know, I can add a bit of uh, blue to make that he was really cold. I don't know. I'm basically I'm not going to do much on the lips. Uh, yeah, that was just to show you. I'm just actually, so I'm going to erase this one. I'm just going to delete lips mask. No adjustment there. And uh, so on this one, all I want to do is maybe... Uh, the, the everything is kind of bright around him, so I'll show you a really close. I go here, I'm going to take a gradient filter, and then I'm going to make a big circle around him, and I am going to invert the circle here. So you see in red, red is what's going to influence. Like let's say I add ex minus exposure, it's only going to be in the circle. I don't want this, I want to make everything darker, so I'm going to invert it. And by inverting, it's making everything darker but him. Okay, and I don't want to overwhelm you with datum, but I want to give a little film look to this photo. And so one of the way to go to film look is go to the color grading. And a classic film look is adding a little bit of blue in the shadows. A little bit. See, that's the shadows. I'm adding a bit of blue, not too much, but just a little bit of blue. You can add like magenta. This is a color wheel. I'm just going to and that's the shadows here. That's the shadows. Shadows. It says shadows. Just a bit of blue in the shadows. And a little bit of a little bit of orange in the highlight, and it's just gonna give a little look. You see, before, after, a little look for the photo, and I like that, so I'm gonna give it a three star. Okay, and now I can select my three star photo, and this is all the photo that I've retouched in front of your eyes. Right? If I go a little fast, get my Lightroom book. The link is under the video. Now. Um, I don't want to overwhelm you. I'm not going to show you the map module of the book module or the slideshow because this one or even the web, I hardly use them. A lot of people of my students don't use them. I'll show you the print. I'll show you something cool with the print that I actually do. Let's say that I wanted to show off and make like a little collage with all these photos. You see, it's looking weird for now. So I'm going to go here first to page setup and I'm going to take like a, an A4 photo. Let's, I'm going to print this. I'm going to pretend I'm printing this on an F4 photo into, uh, yeah, landscape mode. Okay. And that's how it looks. Then I'm going to go here to custom package. And in custom package, you see here, there is some margin here, which I don't really want. So uh, boom, boom, boom. I'm going to click rotate to fit. There is, what you see margin here is actually made a mistake in page setup. 
you want to go to something that's the margin is here you see yeah there is margin here top 25 so you can go to manage custom size and i'm just going to do uh 16 by 9 is good and zero margin is good press ok and press ok oh i wanted the reverse in fact so page setup i'm going to go to manage custom and i'm going to go actually the reverse i'm going to go nine width and 16 height okay uh so that is like this okay that's what i wanted and now there is no margin it's just a little trick it's the purpose of this is actually to print i don't use it i use it to make collage for like friends and then i can drag and drop this photo and check it out i can drag and drop all the different photos on this and I can make like a really cool collage. So I can take this photo, I can make it bigger, and then I can make this photo, make it like this, and then put him in the middle, like that, and uh, this, uh, like here. Okay, and you can even make this go like that. Command, yeah, it's command. I see the reason why it's doing that is because log to photo aspect ratio is on. If you take that out, I can now make this the size that I want. So if I want to do something like this, as part of the collage, I can. Voila. Make this maybe a bit smaller. Just for the fun, I'm going to make this really big, like that. And like that. And I can move things around in the photo with the command option. Make this like this. Make him move like that. And I can reposition things how I want it with the command key. I can even add, it's just for the fun, it's just to finish it off. Uh, I can add a photo border uh, and whatever width that I want. And let's say I just want this to be in a file. I don't want like to, I can print it, but I can also print it into a, a, into a file. So I can go to printer, JPEG, and uh, I leave the default and I say print to file. And I'm going to put this on the desktop and I'm going to call it collage. Okay. And it's going to, basically it's going to, you see, preparing job and it's going to print it. Okay. Now let's say you want to, I want to show you two types of export. Let's say you want to, you want to print this photo or you want to send this to a lab. You really like the photo. You want to send it to a lab to print. So what you should do, or you just want to post it on the internet. I'm going to show you both versions. So if you want to print to a lab, you, you right click, you click on export, export. And then you can choose where you want it. So I'm going to choose on a desktop. I'm going to choose desktop here. Put it on the desktop just for the now. So that's the export location. File naming, I'm not going to touch. File format, I'm going to touch. I'm going to go JPEG. When I send to a printer, I go JPEG. And I put the quality all the way to like, not 100. I usually do like 95 or like something like this. And then... Because the color space is this RGB and a lot of printers not just work in that color space. Image resizing, I'm not going to do because I want a full resolution. And that's about it. And I could rename the folder. Let's rename it. Let's rename it. Uh, let's go to custom name. And let's call it Iceland Beach. Okay. And now I can just click on export. And on the desktop, I have Iceland Beach here. And look at the resolution. If I press Control I on my Mac, you can see the resolution. It's the full resolution, 9,398 by 5,286, which is my Sony A7R4. And then here's the collage, you know, that we did of all the photo we retouched. You know, it's kind of cool. You can send that to somebody or you can print it as such. And uh, it's really cool. And so let's say I wanted to export this one to post it on the Internet, like on Facebook or social media. You right click, you export. I'm still going to put it on a specific folder, custom name. I'm going to keep Iceland Beach as the base name. I'm going to keep everything the same, except I'm going to resize to fit. And I want it to be what I advise you to do for social media now, because a lot of people have like big screen that are like 3000 pixel wide is to export it at 3000 pixel and quality around 60. And now I'm going to export that. And you see, because the name is exactly the same, it says, do you want to replace the the file or give it a unique name. I say use unique name. And now if I go on my desktop, I got two photos. I've got Iceland Beach, which is a super high resolution one, uh, you know, 23 megs. And I've got this one ready to put on social media, which is 3000 pixel wide and it's only 375K. And let's say I also wanted to post this one on social media. 
I can just right click and to go faster, I can go to export, export with previews. And it's going to do exactly what I did before. I just need to click on use, use unique names. And now it's going to export it. 3000 pixel, 60% compression on a JPEG and it's good to go. All right, guys, I hope you like this. If you can like this, it will be amazing. Also, don't forget, you can try my free membership and you're going to get for free the Lightroom shortcuts, the Know Your Camera. It's a little game I made to help you master your camera and a composition guide that you can carry with you. You'll get much stronger composition. Plus, you're going to get a printed copy of my Lightroom book that I'm going to ship to you. You just need to tell me where to ship it and you just have to pay the shipping. Also, if you want to learn Photoshop, I've got this really cool video about Photoshop starting right now. It's about 20 minutes and I'm going to show you how Photoshop works. Thank you very much. Go watch this.